This is a drill. And this is a driver. What's the difference? And which one should you buy? What is up, Flip fam? Welcome back to another episode of What the Flip, and today we're talking shop the difference between a drill and a driver. At first glance, these things might look very similar. They're both handheld, pistol-gripped power tools with spinny bits up front, but they're very different tools. First up is the drill. You'll notice it's bigger than the driver, but the main difference is how it accepts bits. It uses a chuck, which is this triangular adjustable clamp that allows it to accept a wide variety of round shank bits which makes this thing extremely versatile because you can use different size drill bits, screwdriver bits, among a million other accessories. Hole saws, paint stirrers, polishing wheels, sanding wheels, brushes, augers, water pumps, metal shears, grease guns, Just literally anything you can think of, they've probably tried to stick it on the end of the drill. It also has an adjustable clutch, which allows you to limit the amount of torque so you can use this for precise and delicate jobs. <laughs> Now, the impact driver, on the other hand, is more of a one-trick pony. It just drives fasteners. So screws, bolts, etc. This thing drives them, and it does it very, very well. A driver's smaller than a drill, but it's much more powerful. And instead of a chuck, it uses a collet, or this quick-change clamp system, which allows you to swap bits easily. A driver also uses rotational impact. That's that loud noise you hear, meaning a great deal of torque is being applied, allowing you to drive long screws into difficult material. Imagine you're changing a tire and you can't get the lug wrench to turn. So what do you do? You have a buddy step on it and kick it or maybe you whack it with a hammer. Same thing that's going on right here. You've got a little guy inside of this that anytime it meets resistance, it whacks it with a hammer, giving it the power it needs to back out stubborn screws or drive through difficult material. But Trav, didn't you just say that the drill can also accept driver bits? So if it does the same thing, why would I spend the extra money? I'm no dummy. All right, here's a situation for you, smart guy. You're hanging kitchen cabinets. That means that you've got to take a screw, put it through hardwood, potentially a ledger board, shims, wall covering, and a two by four. Now where I come from, that's a long ass screw. Say you're bebopping along with your drill and you meet a little bit of resistance and all of a sudden, grrr, guess what, you just stripped the screw. It's hanging halfway out, the project's not done and you're frustrated because you don't know what to do. So you take your fist, you put it through the old sheetrock. Now your wife's upset because you just put a hole in the wall and you taught little Johnny that it's okay to express his anger with his fist. So she gets upset and she leaves the house and you've got to make things right, but guess what? It's 10 p.m. and you don't have a 24 hour florist in town. I've seen it a hundred times. Obviously I'm exaggerating, that's never happened, probably. Now, while the drill can still drive screws, it's not as smart as the driver. Whenever it meets resistance, it just continues to spin, which can lead to a stripped screw. Now, you can still strip screws with a driver, but it happens far, far less. But when it comes down to you can only buy one, uh, maybe you've got a small budget or you've just got a really tiny toolbox and you can only fit one tool in it, obviously get the drill. It's much more versatile. You can do a lot more with it. But if you can, get both. That's why they sell these things in match pairs all the time because they complement each other so well. Use this when you need the brute driving force and use this when you need finesse and versatility. They work very well together. Now, whenever you're in the market to buy a set, the workload is measured in volts. I've seen it as low as eight, as high as 50. The larger the number, the more heavy duty the tool. Uh, generally between 18 and 24 will get you where you need to go for most projects. Uh, these are 20. Brand doesn't matter so much anymore. There's a lot of companies making really good tools. Just stay away from the cheap crap that you see online or Harbor Freight. Get yourself a decent quality lithium battery tool. A lot of great affordable options out there. Ryobi, Porter Cable, Rigid, Cobalt, Craftsman. They all make pretty good tools with versatile lineups. And then when you move up to that next upper level, you've got Bosch, then Milwaukee, Makita, and DeWalt probably the top three or you can get yourself all three and get yourself a maki dewalki or dewalk akita if you're into combining stuff now again brands don't necessarily matter but one thing to keep in mind is whatever ecosystem you buy into and what i mean by that is most of these tools are part of large battery powered lineups with lots of different tools so you can get drills and drivers and reciprocating saws and circular saws and radios and lights and all kinds of stuff and while you don't have to have 
the same brand of each tool, it just makes life easier. You can just pop the battery off one tool, swap it onto the next tool, and it just makes the job a lot easier. And then on top of that, whenever you wanna add and build on to your toolkit, you can now start buying bare tools because the tools themselves without the battery and charger are a lot cheaper. Okay guys, I think that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're still confused about the whole drill and driver situation, well, let me make it a little bit easier for you. We're gonna be giving a set away. If you watched last week's video, you saw that we announced a giveaway. It is a 20 volt max DeWalt drill and driver combo. Not these, but a new set. These, we'll be giving away a brand new 20 volt max drill driver combo. Comes complete with drill, driver, two batteries, and a freaking carrying bag. So everything you need to drill and drive and screw and fasten to your heart's content. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below. Now in that comment, leave me some contact information, whatever you feel comfortable giving away, an email address, an Instagram handle, just a way that I can contact you if you win. All right, I think that's it, guys. Join us next week when we announce the winner and Kayla and I get back to actually renovating the house. I think we're demoing the kitchen or maybe replacing windows. I can't remember. You'll have to tune in next week to find out. Okay, that's it. I'll catch you on the flip side.